also the registrations help the speaker to understand the audience mm. diversity but we okay. i will where will i see the register i am not able to see no ashuva uh, shares it uh, yes ma'am uh, i share it in a mail where you got, have the you every links like zoom link youtube link is she link. there i cannot see her oh Uh, you need to unmute ma'am yeah okay okay uh, after starting i can uh, i think i can stop my video or uh, my my face or it should so be there when you screen share automatically the uh, no, you, you, yeah. you, if you want you can stop your video okay, okay. the presentation oh, okay hmm. and uh, ma'am we collect the questions from youtube hmm. and uh, Uh, after your presentation soma will do a interactive session then okay. uh, we uh, go for the questions answer round so stu uh, students and participants get more time mm. to uh, make more questions yeah so should we start ma'am yeah yeah okay okay so i'm going to record it share to just share screen and uh, no ma'am i uh, soma will ask you ah. thanks thanks everyone welcome to bioengine uh, webinar series this is our 48 webinar in this series uh, today we will discuss with a different plant and uh, plant tissue culture and its prospects uh, many few people are working that plant and it's very uh, commercial and beneficial so uh, i request soma to introduce uh, our speaker and little bit bio engine and then we we'll start our program i request all the participants put your questions related to this webinar in the chat box please don't put any unrelated questions if you have any questions uh you may email me is admin@bioengine.com uh we'll give up feedback form after the end of during the end of this webinar you need to submit this feedback form we'll we will we will keep the e certificate after two days uh and it it will be downloadable from the our website so i request soma to start with the introduction hello everyone welcome to bioengine a platform from which plant science researchers and scientists can present their research to the world and future scientists can gain knowledge perspective and inspiration we do this through our webinar series interview sessions and publications thank you for being a part of today's webinar as more people are joining in let me provide some housekeeping information related to today's webinar please note that after attending today's talk you can apply for a certificate of participation for this you need to submit the feedback form that will be provided multiple times in the youtube chat after the presentation when you fill out the feedback form please use the same email address that you used in the registration form and remember to mention your full institute name and address mismatch in email id may result in non identification of participants and your certificate may not be issued you can collect your participation certificates after 2 to 3 days from our website please note bioengine does not send certificates through email please make sure that you have enabled youtube chat on your device so that you can interact and submit your webinar related questions we will collect all the relevant questions for our speaker so as you heard today is webinar 48 the topic for today's talk is challenges and opportunities in palm tissue culture our esteemed guest speaker today is dr mrs m jayanti Dr Mrs M Jayanti is a gold medalist in bachelor's in agriculture from TNAU and masters in agricultural biotechnology 
completed her PhD under the guidance of Professor M. S. Swaminathan. She has worked on strategies for saving endangered plants, helped in setting up tissue culture laboratory, and also used the tissue culture to mass multiply several rare medicinal plants. She developed protocols for oil palm tissue culture while working at the Oil Palm Institute. Her protocols on immature male inflorescence and direct embryogenesis are unique and are quoted by oil palm researchers worldwide. She is the recipient of many fellowships like the CSIR Fellowship, DST Woman Scientist, DBT Woman Scientist, and several other awards. At IARI, she started from developing protocols for regeneration and transformation of tuberose, chrysanthemum, lilium, stevia, etc., and now is currently the principal scientist, Division of Genetics, IARI. She has published more than 40 research papers, 18 book chapters, five books, and led more than 51 conferences. We are highly honored to have her today on BioEngine. Dr. Jayanti, a very warm welcome to our channel. We will start the session now. Please share your screen and start the presentation. Thank you so much, Soma, for the nice introduction. Okay. Yes, we can see the screen. You are able to see the screen? Yeah. It's okay? Yes. Just a full screen mode and then we can start. It's in the full screen mode. Here. Uh, not there? No. Um, uh, no, ma'am. It's not uh, in full screen. Uh, one minute. And then I need to close this and then start. No, no, no. Just no, 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 Just. I'll close this uh, PowerPoint presentation once again open. No, we can do it from here. Uh, ma'am, in bottom, in, in the uh, bottom, in, there is a yellow, yellow uh, third option should be, uh, yes, that one. That is no, reading no, you. No, no, no ma'am. Just it, next to that. Uh, slideshow, that, is, that yes. I'm doing, and here it is happening, slideshow. Oh. Oh, so your, so ma'am, then you, you just click here, unclick the first option. Unclick, the, yeah. Uh, uh, is it okay now? Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, we need only that this option. This is. Uh... Wait one minute. I you know I'll close it and again open it. Okay. Yeah, now, uh, now does it come? Now is it okay? No, ma'am. There no screen share. Huh? No screen share. Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Oh, share screen. Oh, now how is it? Mm, full screen mode is yet to come. Oh, oh then what should I do? Uh, how, about, how about we go uh, at in the, the top view of option. the... Yes, yeah. ma'am. In the top, there is an option view. Hmm. Uh, in, in, uh, not that. In, in, in the home, file, home, insert, design, in hmm. that last is a view. So view, you may... Last view, view, view. Yes. View. View. Okay. And then in a uh, slide, so there is yeah. another option, ma'am. Not not in the view, in the in the slides. Slide slides. show, yes, yes. And there uh, is a from, from, from the correct. beginning. From, from the beginning. From the beginning. Uh, now, uh, let's give it some time. It's coming. No, ma'am. It, not. It's yet. happening on my system. I don't know what's happening. Okay, ma'am. So we can start. Uh, okay, is. don't bother on that. Okay, we we should start. It's 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 okay. It's not uh, so small. It can be few. Okay, let me see once again. Uh, 
to share a screen whether I should open again or not. It's okay now. It's the same. Ah uh, yes, ma'am. No, that is same, but it's it can it, it not it's okay. It's it's. Uh, we can start. Yes, happen. we can start. Sir. So uh, the topic uh, for today is uh, challenges in oil palm uh, tissue culture and opportunities. Uh, the main purpose of uh, my talk today is to share my experiences with uh, oil palm tissue culture because I had the opportunity of working with oil palm for nearly six to seven years. Uh, so uh, I hope you all get uh, benefited with this, uh, with my talk. So we have different types of palm. Palms are a, a different group of uh, uh, plants belonging to the family of Ericaceae. And uh, there are so many different palms like coconut palm, oil palm, date palm, peach palm, ratan palm, uh, kitul palm, lipstick palm, meko palm, and all having different uh, uses. So among these, why this oil palm is so important? So that's a question. The simple reason is, of the because of the high yield one hectare of land can give you four to six tons of oil uh, so it is like five times more compared to the rapeseed six times more than the sunflower uh, eight times more than soybean or any other oil seed crop like mustard rapeseed soybean etc so if you see globally there are 81 million tons of oil is obtained from 19 million hectares of land and most of the 72.3 million tons is the mesocarp oil. And 8.8 .8 million ton is from the, is the palm kernel oil. So whereas soybean and rapeseed combinedly producing 84 million tons from 163 million uh, hectares. So why it is so important if, if you ask a question uh, like whether you are consuming oil palm, uh, definitely everybody will say, uh, no, no, uh, we don't consume oil, uh, palm oil. But uh, actually, uh, uh, palm, palm oil is very much uh, intrinsically but related with our life. If you have eaten, uh, if you have taken a piece of cake, if you have taken a piece of, uh, if you have taken a piece of chocolate, if you have had samosas, okay, this uh, slides are not moving? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay, what is happening? Uh, you need to click every slide individually. I'm clicking it. It is moving here. Uh, now, now it's, it's moving. moving and now it's moving. Yes. Uh, when you click on your left, the small icons of the slides, ah. then, uh, that slide will come here. Now is it moving? Uh, in, we are in third slide. One minute. Let me... Uh... To sort this out. Is it coming now? Uh, yes, ma'am, it's coming, but uh, it's the same. You need to. It's the first keep... slide? Uh, yes, but uh, we we are now in third slide. Yes, it's first. You need to move a click every slide. Yes, uh, clicking. It is moving. Is it moving uh, now? Yes, yes, it's moving. Okay. Yes, moving. Click, uh, but why is it not coming when you click here? No, it is no, coming. It's, it's coming. It is taking some time, I guess, but it is coming. Okay, one minute. Is it okay now? Yes, ma'am. You just carry on, but you need to click the slides. Yeah, I'm doing it. It's happening huh. on my side. Yes, it is happening, ma'am. It it's is happening. happening. It's happening. It's happening. No problem, ma'am. You just, uh, if you want to show up your slide, you need to click on that slide in the left, left mm -hmm. window. Okay, I think it's uh, only this way it's possible. 
uh, so that's what so uh, if you have taken a piece of uh, samosa or if you have taken a piece of uh, chocolate or if you eat eaten ice cream or even if you have used soap for taking bath you are actually have used palm oil so palm oil is found everywhere so 3 billion people rely directly on palm oil as a regular part of the diet and it is the staple cooking oil common, commonly used in african and asian food preparations now uh, uh, coming to the oil palm basics because before uh, going into the tissue culture aspect i should say something about the crop before entering into the uh, uh, real topic of mine uh, so oil palm if you are seeing it is a monocotyledon uh, it is a cross pollinated crop the chromosome number is 32 the genome size is 1.8 gb it belongs to the family of ericaceae originated from west africa there are two types of oil in uh, oil palm that is palm oil and palm kernel oil the palm oil which is obtained from the mesocarp of the fruit and the palm kernel oil which is obtained from the kernel and the area in india is 0.3 million hectare uh, the largest producer is indonesia the hybrids are the ones which are cultivated uh, oil yield is around 3 to 4 tons per hectare and this is this i already told oil is from the mesocarp and they grow as grow up as tall trees of 20 feet and takes more than 5 years to yield fruits so this is how a uh, uh, oil palm uh, a garden looks like uh, so some of the pictures i am showing just to have a idea if, if so somebody has not seen the crop and this is how the fruit bunches look on the oil palm and these are the this is a picture of the oil palm uh, fruit so if you cut open the uh, fruit it is just like you are comparable to your uh, coconut the 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 husk portion what you find in the coconut that is uh, called as the mesocarp here and this mesocarp contains the palm oil whether i think the slides are not moving um, i think uh, you are in a uh, later slide yes we were in slide 4 mm that this is in the uh, 11th slide now i think i'll sh uh, shut down and start no ma'am but it's not uh, not uh, it will be sent So, uh, okay, it's not coming to you, no, there. It is taking some time to come. For ma'am, if you uh, tally with the YouTube, YouTube is little bit thirty seconds delay. Ah, uh ha, -huh, ha. Huh. So you don't tally with the YouTube is a uh, is a different platform, and we are in the Zoom. But uh, when you click on the slide, it. it uh appears. okay i will click from the left side yeah yes you need to uh, i am in this slide now yeah okay. so uh, the, these were the pictures i was showing of the oil palm uh, crop and the, how the plantation looks like and the fruit bunches uh, look like this on the tree and these are the these are the pictures of the fruits oil palm fruits now the slides are visible yes yes ma'am is visible ah, and this was what i was explaining it is if you cut open the fruit it is just like this uh, coconut but the where you find the husk there it is the mesocarp which is having the palm oil and then you have a shell inside this you have the kernel which is uh, that is called as a palm kernel and that is also having oil and here what you see is a small thing this is nothing but the embryo that is seen here so oil palm cultivation now it has emerged as the world's major uh, one of the major cultivated crops grown in more than 16 million hectares and the demand for palm oil has increased and will increase further in the, to target more than 200 million tons uh, of the total global production now if you see the major centers of uh, global oil palm cultivation they are indonesia malaysia thailand colombia nigeria and so many others uh, uh, together uh, then so why is it everywhere now something about, i have to before talking about uh, anything i need to also talk about the oil uh, of palm what kind of oil you find in the uh, uh, oil palm so oil palm is a very remarkable crop having two different types of oil in the same fruit one is the mesocarp uh, oil uh, or the oil that you get from the mesocarp which is called as a palm oil which is uh, having a 50 50 saturated and unsaturated content like 43% of palmitic and 40 of oleic but at the same time you have a very different composition of palm kernel oil 
which is having uh, 48 of lauric and 16 of meristic and uh, it is more of uh, saturated so you have two different types of uh, oil from the same crop uh, this is almost comparable to your palm kernel oil is somewhat comparable to your coconut oil uh, so you can see the coconut oil ka, uh, uh, contents here lauric is 49 and meristic is 17 so this is almost comparable to that now, uh, coming to the very important properties of palm oil, uh, though it is having 44% palmitic acid and stearic acid, the, uh, the, some of the very good properties of this uh, palm oil are the uh, carotin uh, content. If you see the carotenoids, it is the largest source of natural carotenes, 500 to 700 ppm of carotenes you find in crude palm oil, and 4000 to 6000 ppm in the oil obtained from the palm pressed fiber, a byproduct from the oil palm uh, fruits milling. So it is like more than uh, 15 times more beta carotene than carrots and 300 times more than that of uh, tomatoes. The other two important components of the palm oil very significant are the presence of the tocopherols and tocotrienols. And tocotrienols uh, are uh, very uh, significantly finding uh, having this property of inhibiting this uh, HNG COA reductase activity, re thereby resulting in hypocholesterolemia. And also this tocotrienol is uh, uh, having anti-cancer properties having a, so these are very unique things that you find in the uh, palm oil. So because of all, uh, it is a very versatile oil and because of its unique property, we can also call it as a trans-free palm oil because it is having the natural capacity to have the solid nature. You don't have to hydrogenate, uh, you do the hydrogenation process where they do with the other oils uh, for getting this uh, uh, like uh, thickened, like dalda and other things. So that is why these uh, uh, products are labeled as trans-free palm oil products. Apart from that, there are so many uses in the industries like uh, candles, glycerols, and even recently, uh, means in recent times as a diesel substitute also, it is being used. Uh, so these are some of the uh, uses, uh, soaps, uh, candle industry, uh, glycerol and all that. So then the common question which every time people uh, keep asking is that whether palm oil is good for health or bad for health. Uh, but uh, there is no clear cut evidence or research findings to prove that the palm oil is uh, uh, bad. Whatever research they have done with palm oil, they have found only, a, uh, in fact, they found uh, that it is having the property of reducing the cholesterol. So it is always the results have found that it is having good properties. So we cannot sign, uh, it means uh, authentically say that this is bad or uh, uh, good because now anyway and uh, whatever oil you take the uh, goodness or badness also depends upon the uh, lifestyle that you lead so this is just a paper to say that there's a very big review written on the palm oil and the heart if somebody would like to see this paper they've, they've given a very comprehensive research of all the research that i've done with uh, palm oil uh, so there is no evidence to say that it is uh, bad for health so in India also, uh, palm oil has been is cultivated in so many different states and Andhra being the highest uh, cultivate, having the highest cultivated area. And uh, the, the figure here shows that there is so much of uh, land, uh, the, the red uh, figures here just shows the potential areas uh, to be covered. So still you have a lot of area that can be covered with palm oil. There are a lot of potential areas to be covered. So in uh, oil palm, uh, everything has been a discovery. So oil palm is having three different food forms, that is uh, Dura, Piscifera, and Tenera. So the commercially cultivated crops are nothing but the Tenera, which are the crosses between the Dura and Piscifera. So uh, what we can say is that modern, initially they did not even uh, know this. So before that, the yields were very less. Once they discovered the Teneras are the ones which have been, uh, uh, which will be obtained after crossing the Duras and the Pisiferas, uh, then the yield, there was a quantum yield jump. So that itself was a discovery. Uh, so here, here the thing is that only once the fruit is formed and you cut open the fruit, uh, based on the thickness of the, uh, the shell, these fruit forms are defined. So the duras are thick shelled, pisciferas don't have any shell, and the teneras are the very thin shelled uh, genes. So it took a lot of uh, time to identify 
uh, this uh, shell thickness gene, but uh, it has been uh, identified and this paper was published in uh, Nature by the Malaysian uh, Palm Oil Board. Uh, it is, uh, though it was uh, 4.7 centimorgan and 9.8 centimorgan away from the closest molecular markers, it was extremely challenging to identify because of the large genome log regeneration times and difficulty of phenotyping in experimental populations of oil palm. So, uh, so this is the thing. So this paper was published in uh, Nature. Uh, so then something about the biology, it is a monoecious crop having male and female on the same uh, flower, which comes on alternate cycles. It's a cross-pollinated crop. The pollination is done by the, it is insect pollinated and you need a specific uh, weevil called the Elodobius camerunicus to pollinate it. So initially when uh, in India also, when we got the palms, we were seeing that it is not, uh, pollination is not happening. Then we are, have to bring these weevils also and introduce it so that uh, uh, they will help in. After that, it is uh, uh, happening. So this is a, it's a challenging crop, even not only for tissue culture, even for otherwise also uh, at uh, different cultivation levels, you have uh, problems with this crop. It's a challenging crop. So why tissue culture is important in oil palm? Here, uh, seed germination is actually a very slow process requiring several years and germination rates are low. And the genetic improvement by seed uh, propagation is very uh, difficult. Selection cycles are lasting for around 10 years and high heterogeneity is observed among the hybrids. And yearly yield increases through breeding of selected oil palms is only 1.25%. But if you are going for a tissue culture uh, methodology, a yield increase of at least 20% can be obtained. But if you're going for cloning, high yielding trees by tissue culture. So tissue culture can accelerate the multiplication of trees with interesting characteristics related to disease resistance, growth pattern, oil composition, and also for any genetic engineering techniques or modern techniques, the basic thing is to have a tissue culture protocol. So uh, the elite uh, here with the uniqueness with this uh, oil palm is that in date palms, at least you have the axillary shoots that is coming out from the uh, bottom. But here, elite palm cannot be multiplied through seed because of its heterozygous nature and no other vegetative propagation is available, no suckers, or offshoots for propagation. And traditional methods like node culture or meristem culture cannot be used. So it has only one single growing meristem and that has to be propagated in vitro by a method called as indirect somatic embryogenesis. So I'll come to what is that. So somatic embryogenesis, so you have two different types of uh, somatic embryogenesis, one is indirect and direct somatic embryogenesis. How does it differ from a, zygo a zygotic embryogenesis? Zygote is nothing but the after the fusion of the male and the female uh, gametes, what you get is a zygote and then the process of embryogenesis takes place, uh, the cell divisions and other things. But here in the tissue culture, what is happening is theoretically speaking, every plant uh, cell is totipotent. That means it is having the capacity for regenerating into a whole plant. So here what is happening is the somatic cells are uh, being converted, induced to uh, go into the embryogenic state. And then the uh, callus, uh, uh, when the uh, callus, it forms a callus and the callus cells are in, uh, uh, induced to form the embryogenic state. And then your embryogenesis process starts. That is why it is called as an indirect somatic embryogenesis. If it is a direct somatic embryogenesis, sometimes from the uh, tissues itself directly, you will be getting your somatic embryos. So in oil palm, that is also uh, a rare case. Uh, so indirect somatic embryogenesis is the method that is being followed. So, so the uh, thing is that with whatever explant that you are getting, you need to first differentiate, into, make it into a callus. Then the callus has to be induced to form the somatic embryogenesis. So, uh, uh, so this is the uh, overall the protocol that is being followed. This very simplified way I'm telling, but uh, once you see all the steps, you will know how difficult it is the entire process. Ortet is nothing but the mother palm. From the mother palm, you take the explants and then you induce it to form the callus. And the callus is uh, uh, properly manipulated to form the embryoids and polyembryoids, which further develop into shoots. Then uh, you get the uh, regenerated plants, which are called as ramets, and then they go to the nursery. Now, uh, initially, when I joined this uh, oil palm institute, uh, I was actually working with uh, medicinal plants, wherein we go to go to the glass houses and collect your uh, explants and come back and sterilize them and put in culture. But in oil palm, many times 
uh, I used to go and stand and look at the palm. Where will I get? What kind of tissue will I get to put in culture? Because whatever you are putting in culture should be meristematic. We should be responding to the media where you will not be able to see your explant because the palm is so tall and you don't you are not able to go and have a direct access to the explant. You need to take the help of somebody, even whether it is for the shoot tip or whether it is for the inflorescence, which is found it found in the leaf axils. You need you are uh, dependent on somebody with a ladder or uh, because somebody has to climb on top of that with a knife. You have to cut the uh, uh, portion what you want to take out and then give you. So you are actually, it is not uh, as simple as you go and take. Then when we read the book on uh, by Corley uh, on advances in oil palm research, we were amazed to see the time frame taken for uh, tissue culture in oil palm. Uh, from explant to the callus, it takes uh, around six months. And callus to embryoids, it takes 15 months. Poly embryoids to shoot 39 months. So it is like a, uh, you need to have a long uh, periods of culture for the, uh, the explants to respond. So there is a totally, at the end of five years, probably you will be getting your plantlets. So we understand and realize that the first and foremost requirement in oil palm tissue culture is to have a very good laboratory because your cultures need to be maintained for long periods of time under sterile conditions. So it, uh, the, the first, first and foremost requirement is to establish a uh, good laboratory for oil palm because uh, many times even in the oil uh, whether your climatic conditions are not favorable then it is like too much of you need to spend too much of maintaining your labs like for example in Andhra Pradesh where the institute uh, oil palm research institute uh, is located it's a very hot place so continuously you have to maintain your uh, tissue culture lab under the same uh, temperature conditions uh, uh, means 27 to 29 degrees centigrade you need to maintain it to so then you need to have an established laboratory so the first and foremost thing what we did there was uh, we approached the department of agriculture and cooperation which funded us to establish a very good tissue culture laboratory uh, in the institute now Coming to the common explant sources, and uh, I, I wanted to discuss about the explant sources, their advantages and disadvantages. For example, if you take most of the time when you say a tissue culture, people will go for zygotic embryos. Why? Because they are highly responsive. Uh, they are many, much abundant and there is no need to destroy your plant. But the biggest problem of uh, clonal propagation is you don't know uh, what is the combination in that uh, zygotic embryos. It is an unknown genotype. So, and uh, so many other factors also affect the, so, so cyber, zygotic embryos is not the one where you have to use when you go for a clonal uh, propagation. Now, uh, shoot tips, if shoot tips is also highly responsive, it is having the ability to propagate and uh, give a single individual reliably. But the thing is, again, if you're having going for shoot tips, you have to destroy, destructive uh, sampling needs to be done. And there will be some limited supply and uh, some species have only grow, one growing apex. So the next is young leaves. Young leaves are plentiful, but again, uh, uh, to go again to the top of the plant and uh, take the young leaves. So again, you are having a uh, destructive method. Then the uh, uh, thing was inflorescence. Inflorescence are only mildly destructive. So it can, uh, it, having a successful protocol in many species and you find uh, inflorescence in every leaf axon. So these are some of the, and roots. Roots are also good uh, explants for cultivation, but the problem with the uh, root, mostly it is uh, decontamination is very, very difficult. And uh, it is so deep rooted and you don't know the exactly from uh, whether the root is of the same plant or for the next plant, such kind of uh, uh, doubts will be there. So these are some of the explants that they have experimented with, uh, but for commercial uh, cultivation, mostly they use the Leaf, uh, this uh, leaf explants that is collected from the near the shoot apex. And if you see the media and the growth hormones, media mostly reported MS media, Y3 media, N6 media, they were reporting. So here they are using two types of auxin for induction of uh, a callus that is 2,4-D and piclorum has been reported. Piclorum is uh, mostly reported in many different species. Even in my own uh, experiment, I'm finding that piclorum is giving you uh, more response. But another important uh, problem with oil palm tissue culture is that it is having a lot of uh, uh, phenolic exudations. Once you put the explants in culture, na, it all becomes uh, with a, a black in color. Phenolic exudation is more. To stop that, the, we add, add activated charcoal and the 
explant uh, responds very well for the activated uh, charcoal. But uh, what happens is when you are acting, uh, act, adding activated charcoal into your media, it is also absorbing the growth hormones. So then in that uh, condition, we will have to increase the amount of growth hormones that we are adding. So uh, uh, people add 450 micromolars of 240 or even sometimes up to 800 micromolars of uh, growth hormones are also reported. Then the culture conditions, if you're seeing initially, the cultures are will be kept in the dark during the embryogenic callus induction phase in most of the protocols. And then they are slowly transferred to light conditions for the induction and maturation of somatic embryos. The regeneration is mostly performed in light conditions with a photo period of 16 hours. And all the phases, the temperatures should be kept constant between 25 to uh, 29 degrees centigrade. So there are three steps, uh, setups. Now the Malaysian uh, people, initially we are all using the solid cultures for induction of media. But now what they are saying is uh, better than the solid cultures, it is the suspension cultures or even the temporary immersion systems, which are working very well for oil palm tissue cultures. Because what is happening is there, the your phenolic exudates or whatever uh, uh, bad things that are uh, there, it will be getting diluted. And also there's a better response of culture. So the lab conditions also should be made in such a way that you can uh, uh, make them into, uh, you can have your liquid uh, culture systems. So commercial micropropagation based on semi-solid media is actually technically unfeasible, very labor intensive and requires a lot of space. So now they have discovered, now even most of the Malaysian uh, labs, they are using liquid cultures or the temporary immersion uh, systems. So in temporary immersion system, the plant is, uh, it is periodically immersed in the culture medium, allowing adequate uh, culture uh, oxygen provision. Now coming to the, uh, with all this, uh, now what are the problems associated with this is, one is the limited availability of explants. And with all this process, you may get a good callus induction, but when you go for uh, the callus to induce somatic embryogenesis, uh, somatic embryogenesis percentage is very low. It is around uh, two, uh, six to, two to six percent, mostly they are reporting of somatic embryogenesis. So, but once this, uh, uh, cells are entering into the embryogenic uh, state, then there will be a ma uh, continuous multiplication of those uh, cells and you get uh, uh, hundreds of plantlets from these uh, embryogenic cultures. So it is very important to maintain your embryogenic lines. Once the embryogenic cultures are seen, then you have to maintain your embryogenic lines. In oil palm tissue culture, what we see, the, see is that uh, uh, palms will respond very differently in culture. There may be palms which don't show any response also. And there may be palms which show very high response. So it is like a very systematic way we need to check whether which are the palms which are showing good response, uh, high yielding palms. Then we need to keep them in culture. And then after getting the plantlets, the strategy is to go for recloning the those palms. So that is how the uh, the other uh, countries are uh, doing in uh, Malaysia. Actually, they have more than 50 years of uh, research experience in this uh, tissue culture area, and they are now coming up with uh, very high uh, yielding clones. Uh, 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 recently, there was a paper with their they've identified their clones, and uh, they are into the market. Then the main, then after all this process, the another major problem with uh, tissue culture in oil palm, what we found was that. Uh, the abnormality that you get, that is the mantled abnormality. Uh, so, so when the plant is, uh, when the cultures are kept in so long, uh, maintained in the artificial conditions, now naturally there is a lot of stress to the plants. So somoclonal variants are uh, seen mostly. Uh, it is like succulent shoot, rigid shoot, some curl shoot, crinkle shoot are seen. And these are also like some truncated leaf syndrome and terminal inflorescence. These are some of the uh, very uh, rare somoclonal variants that can be seen. But uh, the most co commonly seen is the mantled abnormality, which was again a very big challenge in oil palm uh, because this is having a direct effect on the uh, bunch yield. First, it was reported in 1986. Uh, then uh, during 1980s, uh, they have done some tissue culture techniques and they planted the field, uh, planted in the field and first they saw this. So farmers were not uh, very happy and they will not, nobody has the patience to wait and see what happened. So there were like a lot of hue and cry. They were cutting down the plantations because directly it is 
there are no bunches formed there is no oil uh, so naturally that is a concern so then there was a lot of lot of studies which went into finding out what is this behind uh, the reason behind this they are finding that this malformation of uh, the flowers are occurring which is involving the conversion of the anther primordia in both male and female flowers into fleshy supplementary carpels then these flowers are described as mantled and they are non functional and there's no development fruit development in extreme cases sometimes fruits are developed but and they are also called as mantled fruits uh, so uh, here uh, in mantle palms the staminates of the pistillate flowers and stamens of the staminate flowers are developing as pseudo carpels and they are sterile parthenocarpic flowers abortive fruits and very low oil yield and the pollination is uh, of these palms giving rise to variable numbers of mantle progeny uh, so they were not understanding what is this happening the trait is non mendelian and sometimes reverse back to normal if wherever they, they have left the palm as such they are finding it it is reverting back to normal so then they have found the reason for this this is a classic example of epigenetic variation in oil palm Uh, with an overall decrease in the dna methylation found in the mantled raw, uh, ramets so this is again a paper that's uh, with a with a lot of uh, study which has been uh, published in nature uh, so they found that the mantle palm are uh, mantle palms are resembling the defects in b function matchbox gene suggesting a strong uh, candidate for epigenetic uh, modifications so now there is a, a company called uh, sursa with karma that is uh, that is a locus called karma Uh, they have developed a test which is allowing for the detection of mantle palms at the nursery stage so the simple kit just you take the leaf and uh, treat it with bisulfate and bisulfate converts the cytosine into uracil but leaves this uh, phi methyl cytosine intact so this way the methylation uh, status is detected using a pcr assay so this is how the mantled palms uh, fruits look like Uh, this is again another uh, picture of mantle fruit so in india also we had an example where the godrej agrovet uh, imported uh, so many tissue culture uh, uh, clones from uh, of course other countries and then uh, when it was planted we had this uh, problem of uh, mantle uh, phen uh, this phenotype uh, so uh, so why uh, uh, why this is uh, happening Uh, so this is the in vitro propagation method that you are uh, following portion i wanted to yeah so in vitro propagation method because uh, uh, you are using this uh, complicated method of indirect uh, uh, somatic embryogenesis and then some of the genotypes are highly prone for this kind of uh, somaclonal variation and the starting material is very organized in the beginning then uh, it is at going through all this uh, stress of keeping the cultures uh, under high uh, concentration of growth hormones and the, sometimes even the explant preparation harsh uh, preparations also uh, are responsible for this somaclonal variation and of course your type and concentration of uh, plant growth regulators and the uh, number and duration of uh, subcultures also matter in this uh, in this thing so here uh, what they find in this mantled abnormality was that uh, how did they discover it is an epigenetic thing because partial or complete recovery of normal phenotype after a period of time in the field and there was a non mendelian inheritance of the mantle phenotype absence of dna polymorphisms and altered ploidy levels in mantle palms and presence of global dna hypomethylation in leaves inflorescence and callus of mantle trees and presence of single sequence methylation polymorphisms and expression polymorphisms in mantled trees so this all led to the discovery of this uh, uh, mantled uh, marker this is a law, this uh, paper was published in nature and this work is uh, been conducted you can see the number of authors it is like 40 authors and around uh, 20 25 institutions worked together to rediscover what is uh, what is the reason behind this so this kind of uh, work what i feel is oil palm uh, may you need collaboration and you need lot of people need to work together to find out a, a solution to the problems of oil palm because oil palm it's a, it is a, a little bit of a complicated 
crop. So in this, they found that methylation uh, status of a, a retro transplant uh, person denominated as karma, which is located in intron 5 in this particular EGDF1, it is determining the presence of this mantled phenotype. So there is a dense methylation is, uh, of karma, which is giving you a normal fruit set, while hypomethylation is cause which might arise due, during the stressful tissue culture procedures are leading to the splicing of the CGDF1 and formation of an in, incomplete uh, protein. So then after on this basis, they have, as I said, they have already developed a karma screening assay. And uh, they are, uh, this is allowing the assessment of mantling risk and early culling of plants. But this has not yet been uh, in a very big scale. They are uh, still in the experimental stages. Now in the tissue, in the oil palm institute, we worked with uh, different explants like immature embryos, inflorescence, sphere, and root. And uh, inflorescence, we we could get some good results because, uh, of course, the advantages of using inflorescence I already told you. We can collect it with the minimal damage to the mother palm, the, uh, and the sterilization is also can be avoided because if it is in the uh, sheet, it is covered with several uh, layers. So once you sterilize a, a layer, the inner uh, explant is not getting exposed to the sterilence. Uh, so uh, this is how we, we have to collect the inflorescence from the leaf axle. And uh, we uh, uh, did a, we got a very good uh, callus, uh, uh, callus induction from these inflorescence. Uh, and we also got a good embryogenesis uh, also from these uh, 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 palms after, after repeated subculture. These are some of the pictures of the inflorescence callus uh, that we got and uh, the, the uh, embryos that are developing from the uh, callus. And uh, after a third or fourth subculture, after every uh, three, four months, uh, we need to subculture them. So, and then we were, we were able to get uh, some of the uh, somatic embryos. This was the different stages of somatic embryos that you could see here. And uh, uh, the plantlets were developed from these uh, uh, somatic embryos. And uh, the, after that, the plants, again, you need specialized conditions for rooting and hardening of these plants. Even after the plants re uh, regenerate, it is very difficult to make them survive up to the nursery level. So we need specialized uh, uh, conditions for it. So, the, so this was the, uh, our team who visited the uh, oil palm uh, cloning uh, protocol here. And we have Dr. Ajay Parida also, who was the, who is now recent, uh, I think two, three days back, he expired. He was the one who evaluated this uh, technology. Uh, he, he, he is currently as the ILS uh, director. Uh, so this is, I just wanted to show this because uh, I remember him now. Uh, so this paper we published uh, in uh, Springer uh, journal uh, on this immature oil palm. So here, what we find was when we were doing with the oil palm uh, immature embryo, uh, immature inflorescence, uh, in, in some of the inflorescence, we were uh, instead of getting the callus, we were uh, it was trying to develop into uh, complete uh, plantlets. So this strategy probably uh, nobody, not many people have tried, but they have reports in coconut and other uh, crops like uh, from uh, inflorescence, if you can directly get the plantlets, that will be a good strategy instead of going through the whole process of uh, differentiating and redifferentiating. So that is one strategy which they, you can uh, try. Now also, we also tried from the spear leaf uh, so spear leaf, the problem is again at that time, like when the uh, readers, when you have a, uh, the germplasm collection is also less. And when we have identified some high yielding palms, nobody would like to give the palm to you for work because uh, they know that there will be some kind of destruction happening to the palm. So there was uh, that problem, but uh, we did get some palms to work. Uh, and once you sample a spear leaf from one palm, it will take at least two to three years to recover from that uh, process. So we were trying our best. We were trying different procedures of taking a part of the spear at least 10 centimeter before the uh, the epical portion, so that we won't destroy the plant. But once you get your uh, palm apex, it is like you are getting so many uh, cultures. So you need that much of space. Uh, it is like thousands of explants you are getting, and you need that much of space uh, in your lab to maintain it. So these are some of the pictures of uh, our callus induction, what we got from the uh, spear leaf. And here also we were able to in induce the embryogenesis and uh, plantlet regeneration. 
root uh, also we tried as an explant but most of the time we, it was like contamination so we were we discontinued with that stage and immature embryos of uh, some of the uh, very uh, distinct hybrids uh, we were finding that we are getting direct embryos from the explant so this is one uh, thing like there's no nowhere reported about uh, not many reports on direct embryogenesis but if this could be also a strategy then we we can uh, save the problem of all this uh, mantled and other things. So this is again some interest they showed at the time for even the Malaysians were coming forward for uh, collaboration on this aspect. Uh, so these are some of the challenges and alternatives like there is no offshoot formation. There's very, very low uh, somatic embryogenesis uh, that you can get here and limited explant availability and mantled abnormality and reduced oil. So these are all the different challenges that you are finding it in tissue uh, in oil palm tissue culture but there are they also some alternatives we are suggesting like directly if you can get plantlets from the immature inflorescence or if you are going for a liquid culture and uh, getting uh, better uh, uh, somatic embryogenesis using your uh, leaf explants itself uh, so these are some of the alternate uh, strategies. Now to sum up, like let me see the uh, if you can see 1960s we had there there was this uh, oil palm uh, tissue culture who had started and plantlet productions were reported in 1970s and in 1986 uh, clonal abnormality was reported and several hundred hectares of land were uprooted and tissue culture labs also stopped their uh, production. But again, uh, after uh, solving all the problems, after a decade, it has again uh, revived. At present, there are so many tissue culture laboratories in Malaysia, Indonesia, and Costa, Costa Rica producing uh, ramets. So if you see the, uh, uh, the figure, like uh, Malaysia is producing the more tissue culture plant, like 2.5 million ramets per year, Indonesia. This is, a, okay, of course, an old uh, figure of 2010. Maybe now it has still increased. Uh, but uh, Malaysia stands first in the production of tissue culture plant. And in Malaysia, what you find is it's a unique situation where all the small, small private uh, uh, labs have started their own tissue culture uh, protocol. No protocol is uniform. They have started and they have their own uh, protocols. So uh, it, the, this is the uh, now around 15, uh, including the Malaysian Palm Oil Board, there are around 15 centers which are working on the uh, tissue culture in Malaysia and Indonesia also there are uh, so many uh, around 11 uh, tissue culture laboratories apart from the Indonesian Oil Palm Research Institute there are so many laboratories which are working and uh, uh, Costa Rica also there are they have started Papua Guinea also Thailand also they are working on uh, tissue culture. So now they have uh, Malaysians uh, after uh, getting into this uh, 40 to 50 years of research, they are now into cloning of oil palms with specialty traits. Uh, so here uh, they are what trait, what kind of traits are uh, they are doing is the high low height. Once the palms are reaching uh, very tall, then again the uh, uh, what is it harvesting is also becoming a problem. So they are going for a low height uh, palms. Height increment in the present planting materials is 45 to 75 centimeter. Now they want to reduce it. Similarly, they, uh, they want to go for a high vitamin E content. Uh, means uh, now it is around 600. They want to achieve at least 1,000 to 1,500 ppm of vitamin E. High carotene, it is 500. So they want to reach a level of uh, 1,500 ppm. And also virusins is another uh, 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 trait which they want to work on. Like uh, their uh, virus and fruits are green when unripe and change to orange only when the bunch matures. So this is kind of a marker. You know exactly when the fruits become ripe. Otherwise, you have to. It is a, 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 a there is no color change as such. So uh, this is again from the uh, Malaysian Palm Oil Board where they have clearly said that there is a lot of time uh, saving as well as a better response if you go for liquid cultures of uh, uh, suspension cultures or liquid cultures in oil palm tissue culture. Also, they have developed uh, when uh, so much of time you have to keep the cultures in the uh, in the in your lab. So they have developed some markers for somatic embryogenesis. 
And the use of these markers, they have used it for predicting the calogenesis rate in uncultured, even in one day cultured leaf explants, uh, they can just test it and say whether it is going to produce uh, somatic embryos or not. So in that case, that need, need not be, need not maintain them for a long time. If it is not going to produce somatic embryos, we can just uh, discard it and keep only because this is again a huge investment uh, for maintaining your cultures of such huge numbers for a, such a long time. So these are some of the uh, candidate markers they're reporting, which they've used for uh, uh, testing your embryogenesis uh, percentage. So, and there are not much reports on the uh, inflorescence work. Like for example, male inflorescence, uh, our work is one, and then there is only the Texiras of uh, France, from France has reported in 1993. After that, uh, there is not much of work with male inflorescence. Female inflorescence, there is only one uh, report. So inflorescence is one thing which is uh, not uh, that much explored. So it can still be explored and uh, uh, worked on. So from Thailand, we have uh, an, also a patent on uh, uh, for uh, from uh, this, uh, for, for producing oil palm elite uh, genotype from young inflorescences. So this is actually uh, the picture of uh, a picture which was taken during the uh, one national conference held in Vijayawada during uh, 2007. And this uh, this lady here, she is uh, uh, from the AAR, uh, that is one of the private companies in Malaysia, which is producing the largest uh, clonal propagation materials. Uh, so she interacted with us, and we were also developing into some collaborations. But unfortunately, uh, she passed away of. Uh, brain hemorrhage and then uh, we could not, uh, there was not much of contact after that. And here in this picture, you can see Dr. Uh, Raj Naidu is also a world, uh, means world famous uh, Malaysian breeder, oil palm breeder. We also see the uh, current uh, director of the oil palm institute in this picture, Dr. Mathu. So this is just to show that uh, uh, she came and interacted with us during that time. And at that time they also shared some of the uh, their uh, work at that time, they are clearly proving that uh, clones, tissue culture clones are having a definite increase, uh, percentage increase over the, over the normal uh, dura into piscifera crosses. So this is that I have to say uh, that much. This is the, uh, uh, for if, uh, this is also a, a, a table to show that uh, the tissue culture clones are having a great increase in the percentage of oil FFB increment is much, much higher as compared to your uh, normal uh, clones. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Thank you, ma'am. I'm collecting uh, many questions and I'm also waiting for more many questions. As you know, uh, YouTube is a little bit delayed from the actual presentation. So I request Soma. I the... hope I was not very fast. Was I clear? Uh, yes, ma'am. It's, it's, it's okay. Except for the thing that uh, slideshow became little. Uh, yes, yes. No, ma'am. Presentation was very nice and interesting. So, ma'am, uh, I'm collecting the questions related to your presentation, but Shoma will go for the interactive session. Yeah. And this interactive session is uh, for the motivation to our young, partic young participants from mm -hmm. different, uh, different locations, as I can mm -hmm. see in the YouTube channel. So I request Shoma go for the interaction signal. I request all the participants, please put your questions on the YouTube. I will collect all the questions for the speaker and I will ask after the interactive session. And uh, after the question answer round, I will give the feedback link. Okay. Thanks, Shoma. Hello, everyone. Uh, so we will now start the interview or interactive session that is an integral part of our webinars. Um, so, uh, ma'am, uh, it was a very wonderful presentation, and uh, I'm sure many of our viewers were they found many new things to learn. Uh, ma'am, uh, we would love to know how you, uh, you know, build uh, what you are here and how you came here today, how you built your career. Would you please share your journey as a plant scientist with our viewers? Yeah, that's what. So actually, my thing has been like uh, throughout, it is like take life as it uh, comes. <laughs> so it is not like that I wanted to become a plant scientist or anything like that. I didn't have any family background of any scientist. My father was just a normal employee in a private company. 
Uh, so like that uh, so and in fact uh, i did not even know when i was doing in a plus 2 that there was a subject like agriculture as in the normal other uh, cases what they do we do we study for engineering and we are studying for medicine so uh, so right. it is like that so and then uh, all are applying okay what that time uh, there was a common uh, exam na, for agriculture also so it is just like you put tick there also and then then you were knowing that there is something uh, okay then after that when you have gone to the college okay then you came to know okay there are so many things that can be uh, done with it and um, at the time uh, plant issue culture was very much novel and that was like a big thing in the college also so after that uh, then everybody encouraged that uh, we do biotechnology biotechnology was a new subject at that time introduced mm-hmm. by the dbt in fact we didn't even have teachers Uh, mm-hmm. to teach biotech most of them they were deputing from genetics and plant breeding in the i did from tnau uh, so uh, so we were in the third batch so we did our biotech and then uh, then i be- came to chennai then my parents were not reluct i had a csr fellowship my parents were reluctant to send me for even uh, doing my phd and uh, professor was starting uh, professor swaminathan was starting his uh, foundation at chennai Uh, mm-hmm. so uh, with a fellowship in my hand i just uh, asked him sir whether i can uh, i have a fellowship and i it's going to go waste and whether i can uh, continue, do something in the foundation then he has taken me in the foundation but at the foundation again it is like establishing your own lab and mm-hmm. then uh, doing your work and at that time the priority in the foundation uh, foundation was to conserve rare and endangered uh, plants mm mm-hmm. so uh, we were into the red data books that is being published by the botanical survey of india looking which plant is threatened which is endangered and uh, uh, my pl- crop was on uh, my plant was on protelaria longipes which is er- listed as endangered in the red data books so we had to do lots of surveys uh, we were going to silent valley forest neel grays uh, kolli hills and all forests it was a it was a great experience like it with a team of anthropologists and uh, uh, other uh, experts you go explore and then you see that there's lot of diversity and even uh, mssr at, at that time had a, even a gene bank so we used to collect uh, we used to visit tra- several tribal hamlets and uh, amazed to see the millet diversity in the kolli hills Uh, we collected a lot of them and those things uh, now it has become it is as, assuming significance like uh, whatever the base work that we did at that time uh, then now after so many years i am seeing that uh, these things have assumed great uh, significance so millets are now considered as so important but we have we have spent a lot of uh, time and energy to collect all the millets uh, uh, millet ka genotypes from the uh, tribal uh, Uh, tribal groups of kolli hills and even uh, the basic principles of uh, biodiversity and all those things were under discussion at that time so then whatever we did those studies became the uh, later on became the uh, policies now you have the biodiversity acts and mm-hmm. all, so much of awareness which was which was all not there that time you so led the foundation yeah so it was a big thing but then again when you go into a job then it will be a totally different thing like from uh, from these crops to oil palm uh like it is a uh, it is so different so it is like uh, like for me it has not been a very planned thing that i want to do this and i'm going towards this i am i was just taking whatever comes in my way as an opportunity then i had a lot of uh, chance to do research management that also i took it as a opportunity i tried to do my best whatever uh, given to me okay that was wonderful to hear ma'am mm-hmm. uh, ma'am what motivates you to work for the better, betterment of agriculture the agriculture is uh, it is it is there to stay whatever you say whether during corona time whatever pandemic uh, everybody needs food and that is a back, uh, that is the main thing so if we can contribute in some way or the other uh, for, uh, for in agriculture that is i think a, a great uh, satisfaction mm-hmm. so that that only motivates me to work uh, in this field uh, ma'am uh, for crispr vector transformation uh, plant tissue culture techniques like protoplast culture anther culture cell suspension culture are gaining high demand what are your thoughts on this uh, i actually feel that uh, these things have not been properly exploited in plants because you can do lot of things if you are uh, really working uh, on anther cultures protoplast cultures and uh, this but these things require lot of 
hard work effort and uh, you it means that kind of patience also which uh, which i don't know whether the younger generation is having but if if it can be done they, they these are the fields which has not been totally exploited uh, you, you can do so many things in this but it needs a very concerted effort and if you can do it you can be really successful in a, all crops Uh, so ma'am if someone wants to start a plant tissue culture company uh, which plants would you consider to be useful for this purpose yeah i would say that see it tissue culture is not like what you were uh, doing before na like when we were all doing tissue culture in the 90s it is like anybody wants to start a lab they can just start a tissue culture lab but now it is more organized you have at the national level like the national certification agency for tissue culture under the dbt bcil so uh, and they have a very standard uh, uh, set of procedures for uh, having a tissue culture lab and even if you want to uh, and whatever for the even for the crops they have the standard procedures so i think uh, better to go work with crops which wherein it's already a uh, proven and it's already having uh, standard procedures like for example potato is there uh, or uh, banana bamboo uh, pineapple and these there are a list of crops anybody who is interested they can uh, go and uh, visit the uh, site the bcil site for the national certification so this will be more convenient because you have the set procedures you know like what should be done and you even very clear cut like even in banana they are even saying how many subcultures you should do to prevent some clonal variants so so it will be it will be better if you can go for these things so that your other uh, procedures will be easier even if you want to export such plants or something like that if you get the plant certified then it is more easier so right. now you have a proper setup so anybody wants they should go by this okay uh, ma'am according to you which sectors of plant science research will prosper in the near future plant science now Uh, genome editing is making a, a big way through it is there but of course uh, we have to also keep our uh, fingers crossed because we don't know what will be the there's a lot of things to be studied whether there will be any off targets whether something is going to happen but, but of course uh, for everything plant tissue culture is the backbone whether you want to do genome editing whether you want to do genetic engineering you need a mechanism to transfer your uh, genes to the plants so this is not going to die so this will be there <laughs> so uh, that's the thing ma'am uh, what would your words of advice be to the women scholars in their early phds who are aspiring to be plant scientists yeah i i would i would like to say that uh, you be uh, very hard working hard work always gives you uh, it doesn't fail you it always gives you back something and another thing is you have to always look at what are your strengths because uh sometimes uh, it is not only doing research uh, what you have done if you are able to write properly and what you have done if you are able to present properly or sometimes it may be a huge bit of work which you uh, if you keep on talking about it for 2 3 hours nobody will be able to understand and nobody will it will go through so how do you uh, shortly so what are your strengths whether you can speak nicely whether you can write nicely you need to identify your uh, strengths that is what is uh, more important and then whatever strength you do you be focused and you do the uh, honest and hard work i think uh, you it will be all set you get your returns in the due course ma'am it was wonderful uh, listening to your insights uh, ma'am we will now uh, get back and see if we have any uh, questions from the audience on today's topic yes uh, shoma i highlighted a uh, few questions um, yes please so, read it uh, for ma'am so suren devani asks uh, i am working in tissue culture in avocado uh, due to phenolic compounds the explants becoming brown and not responding mm -hmm. how can i overcome this problem uh, so i was telling na you can uh, go for using activated charcoal activated charcoal very effectively removes your uh, uh, exudates and uh, this thing okay so uh, then uh, surya surendran asks i am a msc botany student i am interested in tissue, in the tissue culture field if i can go abroad oh, can i i mean he, i think he is asking for prospects if uh, in abroad in tissue culture field hmm 
<laughs> so abroad as such uh, then you have to find out which are the labs what they are doing and uh, okay so then there's another question from uh, mohsin raza uh, nakvi uh, i have query uh, that what extent plant tissue culture techniques lead successful implementation for palm cultivators in indian scenario i don't really understand this question yeah yeah <laughs> okay uh, uh, maybe he asking that uh, is it fruitful if uh, he uh, wanted to produce uh, this crop in india uh, is it uh, fruitful for business in, uh, for uh, by using tissue culture yes yes yeah, it, like it, banana it is it will be fruitful but then this is a problem like you need to be very systematic and it takes a lot of time and you need the proper infrastructure for it and probably we, uh, it it works on in a collaboration mode it will be better because you don't get uh, uh, palms everywhere you, you you need to get the uh, explants and all no? so it's better always better to uh, collaborate with the uh, institutes which are working on that and uh, i also wanted to add with ma'am sometimes fruitfulness is a di in in different way like if you have a lab if you have a tissue culture facility you just produce and transport to where it is very you thought it is fruitful mm. so it's not need to plantation and extract the oil from it you may build a technique to tissue culture make them and transport them mm. it's also happened for the banana many banana transported in africa african banana transport to another countries oh. so sometimes it's also you also contribute to the society in different angle but don't uh, sometimes it's not happening that uh, you don't you should not think about that indian people going to be benefited or not some of some in other way your country will be benefited from that export earning so always is fruitful <laughs> so uh, there's another question from uh, sridhara ambat Uh, how do we overcome soma clonal variations in oil palm tissue culture uh that, 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 that is what i was telling they are telling about uh, now they are saying to overcome as such uh, there is no guarantee but they can reduce it to less than 5% of uh, soma uh, mantleness by using uh, this something called as basket sampling they say you take uh, you take the mother you take the explants from different palms so that uh, uh, there you instead of taking from one palm itself because you don't know whether that uh, particular genotype is prone to variation then you have now they are developing uh, several techniques this uh, that karma assay also i said that methylation status assay also they have developed now to identify whether uh, they are going to become somoclonal variant or not and uh, also reducing your uh, culture time like by using your liquid culture and these uh, kind of things they are recommending for uh, reducing your somoclonal variants but uh, there is uh, that's what the 100% you can't be sure because this whole process itself it is a, a too long process the actually the thing is you are putting your cultures under too much of a uh, stress initially you are exposing them to high concentrations of oxin so it is prone to that but we can take some steps like this to reduce your uh, somoclonal variants okay Uh, so ilias uh, khokar asks which auxin hormone is best for in vitro rooting in woody plants is there a high or low level use uh, in woody in vitro plants uh, actually we we found uh, that uh, uh, iba is also working na is also working in oil palm for rooting uh, rooting was not a, a big problem uh, in uh, because it is through somatic embryogenesis already the root po root poles are already uh, fixed so the rooting was not a problem and uh, these oxin these oxins like iba and nia were working well okay uh, then when i have another question from m sahazad ahmed what is the re reason of blackening and burning of callus during regeneration it must be your exudates only or even sometimes Uh, it is the way you handle your callus if your forceps are uh, too hot and you have taken your callus with that that also causes death of cells or it must be the exudates from your uh, explant itself 
Ma'am, uh, I think uh, this is all. Shubha, do you have any more questions coming in? Uh, mm, uh, yes, but uh, most of uh, are similar. Most okay. of uh, uh, work, work, those are uh, many people are working on same phenolics, okay. blackening, regeneration. So, and it's it depends plant to plant. So it's very difficult to. Uh, I have been because, point exactly. You should do this. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, I understand this playing when I work on uh, jute. I'm searching everything and try and not working. So ultimately, you you have to build your own protocol. Yes. yes. Uh, many people asking for protocol, but uh, it's available as Ma'am says. Many papers are available on that. Yeah, but yeah, uh, in Malaysia, there are so many yes. companies. All are having their own protocols. Uh, yes. It is not yes. the same thing because you develop it. You know the overall thing. Then you do mm. experimenting and then develop your own protocols. Mm. Uh, Ma'am, I have a personal question. Uh, mm. Like, uh, uh, it's like in June, their cultivation time is uh, about one year. It's, How it's, much it is for uh, June? It's, it took 10 to 11 months from seed to seed. Okay, okay. okay. But for uh, four months for the fiber. Uh -huh. But uh, for the research, you need seeds for next generation. So it's an annual crop. So uh, for it is a challenge to uh, to do PhD in jute uh -huh. because many people yeah, yeah, are not working. Short. Yes, yes, yes. So what happened to your field? Do you have PhD students who are submit their thesis on plum? And I actually, I had one uh, MPhil student who worked on this. Uh, so he has he got only up to callus and uh, somatic embryos. He could not by the time a plant was come, he has that much only he could do because it is difficult. But MPhil is there for two years and yeah, maybe MPhil means he did uh, MSc and MPhil together like that. He was doing the work okay. continued. So he was in the same lab. So he could write uh, up to that. He was there from the same lab for nearly some four four years. Uh, so okay. that much he could do. But uh, to completely finish that and put the plant in the field, test it, and all that is not possible at all. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it's it's also a difficult for the farm um, uh, because uh, we uh, we need many people working on that crop, and it's a uh, limiting factors. Many times it's for the very limiting factor, but opportunity is uh, the research will continue from generation to generation <laughs> <laughs> like, like <laughs> yes, yes 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 they will retire and go then somebody else has to come and continue with that uh, uh, which is not that is what is not happening in our uh, institutions uh, ma'am i just uh, another personal interest as you did your phd in uh, under swami nathan sir uh, what what was your experience like uh, many people are not from this webinar, I have an experience that many scholars are uh, uh, offended on their supervisor. So there is a, some tensions I, I can feel in from many chats, but I always, that's why we also focus on soft skill to empathy, learn the empathy, what happened to the PI. Now I am a PI, I can understand that what happened. This, this <laughs> what is not being telecast. <laughs> yes, ma'am, it's telecast. There is no, no problem. <laughs> okay, okay. So uh, how, uh, uh, what is uh, your experience? Because he is a great personality and great yeah, yeah. Uh, scientist. So uh, what, what is your experience work under MS Swanya after? Uh, he uh, working with him is a what should I say? It is a, like once a lifetime experience and a wonderful experience. The thing is, uh, sir, sir, sir will not have the time to uh, sit and every day see what you have done mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. what you are doing. But he always guides to the different people. Like you go to this person for this thing, that thing. So we we always got the guidance uh, from the team as such. And but there are certain things which uh, sir used to inculcate in us. Like he used to say that. Whatever you do, you should do it with a passion. He used to say the plants can talk. Uh, so if you are putting something, especially in tissue culture, if you are having the cultures in the lab, it is very essential that you go and see the cultures and stand with that and see each and every tube of what you have uh, put. Because uh, he, he's that way. Otherwise, it's not that you do something and you leave it. Uh, then they also may not respond. He used to say like that. So he used to say that whether it is plant, whether it is culture, you go, you be with it. You don't know their language, but they can speak. 
and it was like uh, that time it was very true like uh, for first time i was working before working with uh, crotalaria i was working with tylophora indica uh, it was so beautiful to see the uh, somatic embryos different stages of somatic embryos in the uh, tubes we got excellent uh, results that time so these are certain qualities uh, that uh, th there are several qualities that you can learn uh, from sir like very down to earth uh, and simple and uh, okay when if if you are interacting once with him you feel that okay everything is all right now i'll be able to do my work uh, that kind of a feeling but it's not that if, if for each and everything he is sitting with you and explaining no that's not possible so but he used to guide us like to whom should we go what we should do and all these things and uh, then sir used to well, after that whatever we write and give he is very uh, very fast he used to correct and uh, give it to us so that was in the beginning stage i was actually after the swaminathan a uh, foundation was established uh, from the foundation i was the first uh, student who registered it was in that that time during that time after that there were so many uh, students who came with him and also uh, as you said that ajay sir is yeah. uh, we we both are connected in that way mm -hmm. i am using his lab now and uh, uh, and uh, he he was the director from ms when mm -hmm. so before came to the ils uh, uh, everyone every, not uh, everybody understand that what happened because he came from a private uh, institute to here but uh, he changed amazed the ils it's uh, uh -huh. uh, people know ils because of uh, yes, 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 yes. and he also carry this feeling so if you go to sir you know it's it's okay now mm -hmm. now it's happened mm -hmm. and sometime uh, sometime uh, before you finish your word you give you the permission yeah, yeah, <laughs> Some, yeah. sometime it's happened to me that uh, i wanted to do in that way but uh, he already give you the permission so uh, the freedom yeah. I, i all i i enjoyed the freedom uh, mm -hmm. to hear to work in and that is supervision and another thing i wanted to say is i don't know whether we at that time we, uh, certain principles from mssrf or maybe i worked with the conservation of rare endangered plants and all these things we always had those things like whatever we do we should have the environment uh, thing in our mind it is not that we do only for our own purpose we should also keep into consideration like for what i am doing whether it is going to harm the environment what is happening so that consciousness uh, should be always there Uh, that is also yeah. certain things we we got it from the foundation okay yes uh, ma'am uh, in the meantime we got uh, two questions uh, uh, one is uh, as you clearly uh, you are starting on uh, on your webinar that it has no health issue mm. and there is no such reported but uh, people are asking on that that doctors are told that uh, don't take pharma mm. so uh, that that maybe that is the reason that people are asking and someone uh, rajendra yadav uh, 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 he wanted to a comparison between which one the better master oil or palm oil in terms of health issues yeah that, that's what i'm saying the health is not uh, depending only on oil Uh, yes, health depends on several factors if you are taking saturated uh, food and you are having a sedentary lifestyle then uh, naturally and if you are if you are how your body's metabolism is some people can don't have all those things maybe they are able to uh, metabolize it properly we don't know but this is not a kind of question like we can recommend this oil or that oil it is mm. also depending on your lifestyle but another important thing i wanted to say was uh, actually indians are consuming more oil than what is recommended Yes. Like the recommendation is only uh, 20 grams of oil uh, per day they say which approximately comes to 7 to 8 kg of oil per per person but actually the consumption is 19 kg of oil okay per person so instead of telling this oil that oil it is to give, the public should be aware that they should consume less oil or the recommended dose for better health benefits mm. yes ma'am uh, ma'am uh... one uh, shweta manhotra asking that uh, can we apply similar protocol of tissue culture in other plants yeah you try 
the coconuts the coconut may uh, there is a uh, central plantation crops research institute uh, for coconuts and the, their protocols are also they also have got uh, results with inflorescence so it's all published uh, results even in aricanet also they have reported uh, so there is a whole lot of there is one uh, review on oil palm uh, this uh, palm somatic embryogenesis if somebody is interested they can just uh, see that that paper is published in the in vitro journal on palm somatic embryogenesis where they are giving the uh, dip, uh, the results of all different palms in the world uh, so if somebody is interested on palms they can go through that mm, this will be benefited mm. uh, ma'am that's it i think okay. uh, the okay. questions is coming and you have answered many many questions uh, thank, you. Th thank you thanks then. thanks for uh, thanks for uh, joining thanks for presenting your work and because my my one intention is every crop should be there yes. so so i'm looking for different scientists who have that different ability and different crop yeah, because yeah. many people work on rice wheat yeah. maize mm -hmm. so it's very common now but uh, different crops is give you a different stories like you introduce many uh, many terminology which is not uh, familiar uh, to other papers and many people are asking that terminology yeah. because different stage of your explant and everything and uh, you also address the real challenge how to collect your explant the height of the plant is so high yeah. so you need ladder or support everyone uh, fam is a very interactive hmm. very very uh, very fruitful for in every angle uh, i wish you uh, very much for more work on this sector and uh, it, it, you sh you should uh, maintain your work because it takes time <laughs> if many people who are um, someone need to maintain it also and with the with the um, number of people so uh, please stay in this in this field and improve this field. and uh, i I also thank Soma for assisting me. Uh, maybe, ma'am, in future we meet once yeah, we again. Yeah, meet again. Yeah, thank you yes. and thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank it's, you so it's much. It's a pleasure, ma'am. Uh, yes, and ma'am, I send you more updates on this when I distribute the uh, certificate. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Bye, bye. And please fill the feedback form. It's mandatory for each certificate. Thanks. Bye. So much. Thank you. Bye.